So, the next challenge that we have is that the devices connected to the hostel Wi-Fi are still not able to access the institute server. Okay, so we did not check the other devices. So, let's go back to our packet tracer file and see what uh, what's up with the network devices. So, let me take this one. So, the device that we are looking at is a phone which is connected to the Wi-Fi network. Okay, and there is another uh, a laptop that is connected to the Wi-Fi network. So, this is it. Okay, so yeah, let's check if it is, yeah, so this is off. Now let's switch it on. So physically we have checked that the laptop is on. So the connection is established with the Wi-Fi router. That is fine. So now let's try to open the web page. Okay, so uh, let's just try to open the web page first and see what happens. 10.10.10.10, enter. Okay, it's taking some time. That means there is uh, some issue. So let's go back and try to uh, troubleshoot it. So um, let's now try to see if we can connect to the web server via the uh, ping, ping commands, okay? So uh, let's type here ping 10.10.10.10. Again, we, we, are, we do not have any response here. Now we remember from the previous uh, scenario that what we were trying to do is trying to connect to the gateway and the gateway was 172.16.0.1. So let's try and see if we can at least get to that. So that is 172.16.0.1. Ping. No, we are not even able to connect to the gateway. That means there is a problem on a much lower layer. So let's go and check where the problem lies. Now let's do this. Let's also try to do the same thing from the phone to see if it's just the issue with the laptop or it's both of them. No, we are still not able to open the web page from here. So just to verify if the server is running fine, we'll go back to the PC and try to open the web page. Yes, the web page is opening from there. That means this PC is able to connect to the server. Now, the fault must lie somewhere here. So either the router is not able, router uh, either the connection between the router and switch has some issues or the router has some issues. So let's uh, try to sort it one by one. So we see that uh, the router is router 00, 0 interface is connected to uh, switches FA0 slash 24 interface. Now, if, though I can just look like, uh, I mean, I can just open the switch and check whether the interface is connected or not. What I'll do is I'll go to the physical topology and try to see how we can look at the interfaces. Okay. So this is one of the switch and this is the other switch. So we are, this is, this is the switch that we are looking for. So, yeah. So this is that particular uh, jack. So it looks connected and there is a light over here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, if you look closely, there is a green colored light over here. That means there, uh, the activity is fine. So this is the port number, uh, fast ethernet zero slash 24. You can see that. Okay. So the other way of uh, looking at, at it would be if you can just, uh, I mean, ho uh, look at here. So if you look at number 24, this is on. That means the port is fine. So we, what we can do is check the connectivity on the Wi-Fi router. Let's go to the physical port. Uh, though you cannot check it uh, here uh, in the way we saw uh, on the physical interface. So what we'll have to do is just look at this. So it is static. There is an IP address. This is there. It is connected to the gateway. Yeah, that is it. So, but there is no way we can ping from this kind of a device to the uh, other side. But anyways, this is a switch, so it does not have an IP address. So now the issue lies somewhere. So this can, this connection is fine. So now what we'll have to see is if there is an issue between this mobile device and the laptop and the Wi-Fi router. Okay. So how do we check that now? So let's go to the laptop and see if the laptop is able to communicate to the Wi-Fi router. So if you open the Wi-Fi router, 
let's look at the address that the Wi-Fi router has that's 192.168.0.1 so what we'll try to do is try to ping the Wi-Fi router from here so we'll again use a ping command 192.168.0.1 no we are still not able to connect to the router that means the connectivity between the laptop and the router has some issue okay so now let's look at what are the settings here 192.168.0.1 and uh, does the laptop what is the IP address of the laptop so you can check it over here aha uh -huh. so now you can see here there is an IP address 169.254.157.83 the point to note here is if you see this series of IP addresses that means your system is not able to obtain a IP address using DHCP and the system itself assigns it uh, IP address of this with the subnet mask of this so if you have two systems which are uh, connected to each other and do not assign you do not assign them any IP address they will still be able to communicate because they automatically take an address of this network and both of them will ha eventually happen to be on the same network so this if you ev ever see this address uh, as a IP, IP address on your system that means your system is not able to obtain a DHCP address okay let's uh, put it to static and try to get an IP address back no we are still not able no, we are still not able to do this so a PIPA is basically uh, the term used for this address now let's see what's the condition on the phone so we'll go here and yes even the phone is not able to get an IP address that definitely means that there is some issue with the DHCP now let's go and check the DHCP settings okay so we have this and okay now here what we can see is there is a wrong subnet mask so okay take some time and tell me how many IP addresses will be available if the subnet mask is 252 I mean you can actually see the answer here it says maximum number of users is one because I mean actually 252 will give you just two IP addresses, which will be the network and the broadcast address so you have no usable IP addresses in this so this is a very common thing which happens because this has a tendency when you when you're using a scroll mouse uh, you might have configured uh, the wrong subnet mask by mistake and saved it and hence it's not working so let's reconfigure the subnet mask and see so now this is this and we can say let's keep the starting ip address as 100 and we can have some 50 ip addresses that you can assign so here you can see starting IP address 192.168.0.100 you can assign uh, IP address to 50 users and this is all set so let's go back save these settings these settings have been saved we'll close this and go back to the laptop now let's again try to uh, get a IP address using DHCP yes now we can get a we have got a 192.168.0.105 and our gateway is 192.168.0.1 Let's check if we are getting an IP address on the phone as well. Yes, 192.168.0.106. Okay, so now let's let's try and see if we are able to connect to the Wi-Fi router first. So we'll go to the desktop. Okay, I have to close this. Go back to command prompt. 192.168.0.1. Enter. Yes, we are able to com communicate with the Wi-Fi router and are we able to communicate with the gateway yes the hostel gateway is also connected and let's even try to communicate with the web server so 10.10.10.10 .10 yes we are able to connect to the web server also now let's try to open the website so we we'll close the terminal sorry command prompt open the web browser then click 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 .10 and yes we are able to open the institute network website so we have also fixed the second uh, issue which was with the uh, settings of the DHCP server in the Wi-Fi router let's go ahead and check it on uh, the since the IP, it is able to get an IP address I'm sure uh, it will also be able to open the website we can straight away go and check that so 10.10.10.10 .10 yes it is able to check so now what we saw is so in this in this particular scenario our approach was so in this scenario what our approach was we first tried to check the physical connectivity so 
we were able to first uh, create a subsystem. So which was our subsystem? So what we have is this PC is working and it is connected to the switch. That means if we disconnect the network from here, I mean this, so the switch, the PC and the rest of the network are able to communicate. Hence the problem lies over this part of the network. So then we tried to look at the physical connectivity between these two. The wire was connected and we could see the light. That means the connectivity was fine. And then we tried to con check the connectivity between these two. So as I said, so sometimes uh, checking the wires becomes tedious or uh, especially when you're connected via Wi-Fi, it, uh, it becomes difficult to check if your laptop is connected or not. All you can do is look at the network status on your uh, laptop or say phone. So one of the best ways is to ping your uh, Wi-Fi router. So when we tried pinging the Wi-Fi router, we realized that uh, the router was not responding. Hence, there was an issue between the connectivity of these two. So when we looked at the IP address of the laptop, we saw it had gotten a PIPA series of an IP address. That IP address is only obtained when your laptop is not able to get an IP address from the DHCP server. So when we checked the DHCP server settings, there was a, a wrong gateway that was configured. Hence, the laptop was not able to connect to the Wi-Fi router. So with this, now we have been able to successfully uh, fix the second challenge. Now let's go towards our third challenge.